to allow me Bhante to ask for the three refugees and the five or eight virtues. Would you please give me the virtues, please, Bhante? And we'll begin with the uh, Buddha Vandana, the Namo Tassa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhassa. Homage to the Blessed One, the Arahant, the Perfectly All Awakened One. Buddhang Saranangachami. Dhammang saranang gachami Sanghang saranang gachami I go to the Buddha as a refuge I go to the Dhamma as a refuge I go to the Sangha as a refuge Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Dutiyampi dhammang saranangga chami. Dutiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. For a second time I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a second time I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a second time I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Tatiyampi buddhang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi dhammang saranangga chami. Tatiyampi sanghang saranangga chami. For a third time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. And now the virtues. Panati pata ve ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from hurting living beings on purpose. Adina dana ve ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking what is not given. Kame sumi chachara we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from false speech. Sura Meraya Madja Pamma Dattana Ve Ramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami I undertake the practice to refrain from mind-altering substances. And these were the five virtues. Now we will complete the eight. We kala bojana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from eating at improper times. Natcha gita vadita visuka dasana malaghanda vilepana dharana mandana vibhusanatana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from dancing, singing, listening to music, seeing entertainment shows, wearing necklaces, perfumes, and beautifying the body with cosmetics. Ucha sayana maha sayana we ramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from high and luxurious beds and seats. Silena sugatinyanti, silena bhoga sampada, silena nibutinyanti, stasama sila visodaye. By virtue, a good life is obtained. By virtue, success comes to be. 
By virtue, one is liberated. This virtue is to be perfected. Sad, sad, sad. Of course, this virtue on not singing, dancing, listening to music, entertainment shows, and all these things. This, this one, I feel like explaining a few things, is mostly for our own purpose here on meditation retreat so that we really allow ourselves and because this is an online retreat which will be heard from all uh, kinds of contexts um, it's not to be afraid of it's simply to help us create conducive a conducive environment for us to meditate in and so this is uh, the main reason why we undertake this virtue. Whether you choose to follow that in your own life, that, that is up to you. But there's no, this is just a guideline. So nobody is scared when they hear it. <laughs> it's all just to help us really. And now the verses of the Dhammapada. Mano pubangam madhamma, mano sitta mano maya, manasa cha padutena, bhasati wa karoti wa, tato nang dukkang anweti chakkang wahavahato padang. Mind precedes all things, all are governed by the mind created by the mind. If with an unwholesome mind a person speaks or acts, trouble is bound to follow along, as the wheel dragged by the foot. Mano pubban gamma dhamma, mano sitta mano maya, manasacha pasannena, bhasati wa karoti wa, Tatonang sukkang anweti jaya wa anapayini. Mind precedes all things, all are governed by the mind, created by the mind. If with a wholesome mind a person speaks or acts, then happiness is bound to follow along, like one's own shadow. Nahi virana virani samantida kudachanang avirana ca samanti esa dhammo sanantano Never is he anger by anger appeased. Only by non-anger is it appeased. This is an eternal law. Idha modati pecha modati kata punyo abhayatta modati so modati so pamodati diswa kamma visudhingattano In this world and the next one rejoices the doer of good rejoices in both worlds one rejoices one delights seeing the brightness of one's own good actions again and again. Punyante puriso kaira kariyate tang punna punnang tamhi chandang kairata sukha panyasa uchayo Should a person do good deeds let one do it over and over again. Let one be wholly devoted to it, for blissful is the accumulation of goodness. Ma pamangyeta punyasa na mangtang agamisati udabindu nipate na Udakun bopi purati, diro purati punyasa, toka tokang pi, 
Achinang. Do not be little goodness thinking. It will never come to me. With each drop of water, the jar gets filled. The wise, the wise gets filled with wisdom, gathering it little by little. So apaduttasa narasadusati, suddhasa posasa ananganasa, tange wang balang pacheti papang. Sukumo rajo patiwa tang wakito. Whosoever should revile a blameless person, a bright sage of spotless virtue, that fool's weak wickedness turns back to him, like fine dust thrown against the wind. Susukang wata jiwama, ye sang no nati kinchanang, piti bakang bawi sama, dewa abasarayata. Surely we are living in bliss, we who have nothing. Feeders on joy we shall be, like the devas of streaming radiance. Metta vihari yo bhikkhu, pasanno buddha sasane, adhigacce padang santam, sankharu pasamang sukkhang. One who lives in boundless love, who is confident in the Buddha's teaching, accomplish, one walks at peace, experiencing the happiness from stilling the tension. And this morning, we will plant a little seed <laughs> about a very interesting and particular topic which is the arising of what we call the Dhamma Chakku the eye or the vision of the Dhamma and this is called the um, Vinaya Samukasa and this is a very particular uh, extract from the Vinaya. Not this particular one, but um, the Buddha was known uh, to teach, especially to people who live the family life, everybody, not the monks, in a very particular way, so that he would uplift their minds first with a talk on generosity on doing good on uh, the blissful realms of existence and once their mind was uplifted he would um, because it was more aware and present he would deliver a gradual discourse uh, on his whole path or his teaching and usually they're at the end of this discourse and he was the Buddha obviously so he was particularly good at this <laughs> explaining his path very often there was what we call the arising of the Dhamma vision within people or understanding the Dhamma and here we will simply get to hear a little bit more about this and this is Uga's marvelous qualities and Uga was a, um, a family man uh, who was not a monk but was very advanced on the path he was a Nanagami one of the higher uh, levels of training even though he was not a monk. And 
I will be discussing a little bit more about these four levels of awakening later on the retreat, but um, here we will get a glimpse of it also. Once the beloved, the beloved teacher was living in Vesali, in the large forest, at the hall residence with the steep roof. Then the teacher addressed the monks, saying, Monks, you should keep in mind the eight unusual and astounding qualities of the lay follower Uga of Vesali. So here this is quite unusual to begin with. The Buddha telling the monks to remember a particular householder or lay follower's qualities. So that's quite a good start. <laughs> This is what the teacher said. Having said this, the happy one stood and left to his residence. Then having dressed in the morning, a certain monk took his bowl and robes and went to see the lay follower Uga of Vesali. Once there, he sat down on the prepared seat and seeing the venerable monk coming, Uga went to greet them, greet him, paid loving respects, and sat down in front of him. Then the monk asked, Uga, the teacher says that you are graced with eight unusual and striking qualities. What are those, Uga? Bhante, I do not know exactly which eight things were meant by the teacher. But I am aware of eight perhaps unusual and astounding things which a person could say about me. Listen and attend carefully to what I will say. Very well, Uga, the monk replied. Uga said this, Bhante, the moment I first laid eyes upon the awakened one, from a distance, understanding immediately came to me and my mind became clear and confident in him. This is the first unusual and striking thing which one could say about me. People have different faculties of the mind and some people, like Uga, need only very little to understand uh, certain things. And as we will see, some people understand the Dhamma very quickly. Some people takes a little bit more time. And some people don't come across it too much. But here you all are. <laughs> then Bhante, with a confident mind, I offered him all of my attention and he delivered a gradual discourse that is, a talk on generosity, a, a talk on performing harmless actions, a talk on the blissful realms of existence. He made clear the wretchedness, depravity, and defilement of seeking happiness in sensory indulgence, and the advantage of giving it up. When he saw that my mind was ready malleable, unobstructed, joyful, and bright. He delivered the exalted teaching of the Buddhas, that is, trouble, how it arises, how it ceases, and the path. As a clean cloth, rid of, rid of dirt, would accept dye perfectly, in the same way, Sitting there, the stainless, spotless vision of the Dhamma came to me. I realized that which is of a nature to begin, all of it is also of a nature to end. Then Bhante, having seen the Dhamma, attained the Dhamma, experienced the Dhamma, thoroughly plunged and entered the Dhamma, 
crushed uncertainty, having gotten rid of skepticism, reached perfect confidence in the teacher's teaching by myself. Right then I went to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha as a refuge, and I undertook the five trainings in virtue of the righteous life. This is the second unusual and perhaps striking thing that could, one could say about me. Bhante, then I went to my wife and we approached uh, and we approached her. Sometimes the Pali uh, use, uses a lot the royal we. <laughs> speaks in the first person as the third person. We approached her and said, Sister, we have undertaken the five training virtues of the spiritual celibate life. If you wish, you can enjoy wealth here. Use it to make merit. Or you can choose to go back to your families and relatives. Or perhaps is there another man whom you desire and wish to marry? Having said this, Bhante, she said, Here is the name of the one I desire, young man. Will you arrange the wedding? That didn't take too long. Having some... <laughs> Having summoned that man, I took my wife's hand in my left hand and her groom's hand in my right hand and poured ritual water over their hands and united them. Bhante, I cannot remember my mind being jealous or disturbed while I was doing so. This is the third unusual or perhaps striking thing that one could say about me. There is great wealth in my family, Bhante, and it is shared unreservedly with the virtuous sages of beautiful conduct. This is the fourth un unusual and perhaps striking thing which one could say about me. When I attend on a monk, Bhante, I attend to him respectfully, not disrespectfully. This is the fifth unusual and perhaps striking thing which one could say about me. If that venerable one teaches Dhamma, I listen respectfully not disrespectfully. And if the Venerable One does not teach the Dhamma, I myself teach it. This is the sixth unusual and perhaps striking thing that one could say about me. Regularly, Bhante, Devas come to me and announce, the teaching of the Awakened One is well explained. Then I tell those devas, whether you come to me and say this or not, I know for a fact that the teaching of the Awakened One is well proclaimed. Nevertheless, I cannot recall my mind becoming elated by the fact that devas come and converse with me. This is the seventh unusual and perhaps striking thing which one could say about me. Bhante, the Awakened One, has taught five worldly fetters. Of those five, I do not see any of them in me. These are, we will see them further along. This is the, this is the eighth unusual and perhaps striking thing which one could say about me. And these are all eight. This being said, Bhante, I do not know what eight unusual and perhaps astounding qualities the Awakened One declares about me. 
Then the monk received alms at the residence of the householder Uga in Vesali. Then after his alms round, he went to see the teacher, paid loving respects and sat down and informed him of this conversation. The Buddha replied, very good monk, Uga has explained what should be explained. These are the same eight unusual and astounding qualities that I declare about him. You should bear in mind these eight unusual and astounding qualities. Now, of course, all of these uh, qualities are not uh, the arising of the Dhamma I, but the, the, this one was the second one. And that is the shortest sutta in the whole canon that I could find, <laughs> which has this passage. And um, and it's, it's a fairly interesting sutta um, in general, maybe with some material that is a, a bit more advanced, uh, talking about uh, the higher training and what an anagami's mind and way of living looks like. Because an anagami has completely um, has left behind doubt completely in the teaching through direct experience of the Dhamma. And there is no uh, blind belief in the personal self anymore. The, this is left behind. And adherence to uh, blind ri rites and rituals cannot be also. But this is the qual these are qualities that de determine also what is a stream enterer, that is the first level of awakening. But his is even further than this um, to understand what he is saying is that an anagami is one who has completely abandoned sense desires and um, that includes attraction towards the opposite gender. And so that is why when he takes on very naturally this uh, uh, the celibate life. Uh, he comes back to his wife saying, well, you can stay here, but basically uh, anagamis live like brothers and sisters uh, if they have a wife or a partner. There's no more uh, physical attraction <laughs> at this level. There is only uh, they, they can have very wonderful life in the Dhamma, in fact. Very, uh, there are many uh, examples in the suttas. But there is not... The Anagami's mind is so pure that it cannot go towards these things. It, it only is so steady and remains in that blissful steadiness. And also... The other thing that is completely given up for them is anger or uh, aversion. They cannot generate any trace of it. So, and that is always a good sign when, if we see someone that, uh, um, that claims to be awakened in the Buddhist in Buddhist terms, and still has uh, sexual relations <laughs> and gets angry at people. Uh, in, in Buddhist terms, this is not awakening. <laughs> so um, when we hear about all kinds of things, about uh, um, different uh, situations and masters, uh, in Buddhist terms, this is not what we mean. So this is briefly explaining how the Buddha taught and he very often taught to uplift the mind first and then he would deliver his path, his gradual teaching. And then there would be uh, the arising of the Dhamma vision, the understanding of the Dhamma. And why am I reading this to you this morning? Well, it's an interesting thing to know, but is because tonight's talk will be such a talk. It will be the discourse 
one of the discourses, a very classic template of that very particular uh, way of teaching. So this will be the whole path tonight and the way he usually described it. And a lot of people after hearing uh, a discourse like this, really, if the Dhamma I did not arise already, uh, their understanding of the Dhamma was much more profound, was much more thorough. So on this, <laughs> I wish you a wonderful meditation. And I will see you either on interview or um, there will be two more days with guided meditation. So today and tomorrow. And these are, uh, these are not mandatory. These are, you can come if you want to join, if you want to sit longer, that's fine. And I will see you then and have a wonderful day.